दी डायमंड सूत्र मेडिटेशन लीड्स टू एक्सपेरिमेंट मोमेंट टू मोमेंट we interact in the outer world of objects and emotions and sometimes these emotions becomes personified they become so huge almost assume a form with that we gather dust and you remember if you have if you are familiar with the kitchen system in the kitchen you have a pot wherein you cook various dishes on a day to day basis one day you are cooking this vegetable next day something else the same pot you use for boiling the water for tea or something else pot remains the same that is used for various things but each time when you make something you wash the pot clean if you have cooked something a savory or spicy vegetable or something else pasta which is sticky and you have to add other condiments so the flavor of the condiments which is essential in pasta the cream the cheese the milk and all these things are required they stick to the inner surface of the pot then when you are finished if you leave it uncared the surface dries and then it will be difficult for you to clean it so you immediately clean it the pot is ready for the next dish if you have one pot if you have many pots then your sink will be full of so many pots because even for breakfast you have to cook different things when it comes to inner life you are given only one pot to make different dishes for your consumption mind is the pot where one moment a friend comes you cook a smile a loving experiment and the very next moment brings something unpleasant you have asked someone to do something and the person fails to do it there is a different kind of emotions arise this goes on on a day to day basis we know the ordinary process of washing the pot after one use do we apply the same thing after one use of the mind do you wash it and how do you wash the mind the pot of the mind through your awareness through meditation techniques each item is to be cleared in a different way for instance if you are using a non stick pot you do not need to use the scrubbers if your pot is burnt in the process of cooking then you need a scrubber and things like these we know in ordinary day to day life meditation is an experiment into the unknown realm no belief is needed no belief in any concept of god is needed for meditation all belief systems 
your knowledge of the scriptures, your conditionings all become an obstruction. If you do believe in the existence of soul, it cannot become an obstruction. Even if you are suspicious, you can experiment with meditation. Meditation is simply going within. Meditation explains the process how to go within. It matters not whether it matters not whether there is soul or not, or if there is God or not. It is irrelevant. Meditation concerns with you. Just as I mentioned to you, in the kitchen when you are cooking different dishes and you have a limited number of wares, do you need to know the scriptures? Do you need to be a Hindu or a Muslim to use a pot? or to use a spice mixture or you have to use the particular vegetables or beans or anything else that you have to cook or just as the main dish of the Italians is pasta and things like these so is there specific dishes relating to any particular religion? No. Any dish can be used by any person. It all depends on your likes and dislikes. You know the whole process. Once you have finished using the pot, you immediately rinse it clean so that it is available for the next use. If the pot is a st you have cooked before that pasta, the surface is stuck with the material and then it cannot be used in that conditioning for boiling the water for making tea. You do not need to believe in God or soul or anything. You do not need to believe in pot or anything else. You can use the pot without anything. All you need to know what kind of care is needed, what kind of temperature, what kind of temperature do you need to use to have while using the particular pot. So one thing is certain though that you are, the pot is there. Also, it matters not whether you will be after death or not. One thing that matters, this very moment you are, and in that very moment, you are using the pot to cook something. That is all it matters in the process when you are in the kitchen doing the cooking. Nothing else matters. If there is anything else that matters, you let me know. All that matters, who are you? The discovery of this question leads to meditation. You have a form that is visible. There is a form which is not visible to the others. When a thought arises on your inner screen, along with the thoughts, there are expressions on your face, there are some bodily movements. These are formful and these are visible to the people. But whatsoever is going on within that is not 
known to the others. The discovery of this question who you are leads to a state of meditation. This requires experimenting. You start going within. It may be a momentary experience. Maybe you are not eternal. Maybe you may vanish into death. There is no condition to believe in. Only you have to start experimenting. Just begin, try. Just try and one day it will happen. No thoughts are there. Suddenly when there are no thoughts, you realize you are separate from the body. It is the thought that connects the form and formless. Bridge that connects the mind and the body is no more there. Thoughts create the bridge. Thoughts establish the link between the body and the mind. How does it happen? A thought arises in your mind. Because thoughts do not arise in the body, thoughts arise in the mind. And when a thought, particular thought arises in the mind, it has its effect on the body. Seeing a person, a thought arises, numerous kinds of effects it may have on the body. Body may reject it. So, it is through the thought that there establishes a bridge between the body and the mind. The two are connected to one another. It is like a coconut. I, in a young coconut, the inner jelly and the inner layer of the outer shell are embedded into one another that it is very difficult to separate the two. As the coconut matures, the gel inside becomes thicker and in, the, in that process a moment comes that this jelly separates from the inner layer of the outer shell. You can remove it without damaging it. That is the state of maturity. Then automatically the layer of the jelly leaves the skin, the outer skin. So when the process of experimenting continues in the inner world, First you become aware of the thoughts and how these create the link between the body and the mind. Now suddenly you realize the link is no more. But you are there, the body is there. But there exists an infinite abyss between the two. You come to know about the nature of the body, that it will die soon. But that which is in the body, you can, that cannot die. This is an experiment, not a dogma, not a creed, instead an experience. When meditation happens, death vanishes. You will not die. But the body must perish one day. Then no doubt remains. The trust arises. Bliss overflows. To be in trust is blissful. Just experiment. With meditation death vanishes. You experience that which is beyond death. You are that. And when you are experimenting, you understand the nature of thoughts, you understand the connection between the body and the mind, 
how thoughts breached to when thoughts slowly and slowly vanish it leads to a state of inner silence because mind means word mind means language mind means grammar when words disappear grammar also disappears language disappears instead and all these disappear and when these disappear what remains there a silence a silence that overflows a silence you cannot accumulate this is your inner being this is your nature your intrinsic quality in the background of the silence you go on accumulating words in the background of the silence you go on accumulating words words belong to the known and silence belongs to the unknown dimension of the being word and silence together create the rhythm the music the word and the silence when they are put together in harmony that becomes the rhythm that becomes the pulse that becomes the music this silence is meditation just change your gestalt you will descend into silence mind is noise mind is word and language to meditation is silence as the process continue you remember something something that you have forgotten meditation becomes a remembrance of that forgotten aspect of your life it is the remembrance of the scriptural injunction that you are ever expanding consciousness you are not the body you are not the mind you are consciousness you are the light and this light this consciousness is your nature meditation brings this remembrance in you and the continuity your name past nationality profession identification with this or that your natural lineage towards this community or that these are all few time just remember i am do not forget this Hindus have called this as self remembrance and Jiddu Krishna Murthy calls this state as awareness you are aware who you are you are that formless but the formless cannot express itself how can my silence my bliss my joy that i am express itself it needs the instrument of the body the five organs of perception and five organs of action it needs the vocal cord to express that silence to express that bliss that is overflowing within the silence whose reservoir i have discovered deep within it needs the words it needs the language so the form the silence is now assuming a form when i speak a word it gives you a formfulness word has a form and silence is formless you are the bridge between form and formless the moment you understand this 
that it is the formless that expresses itself as form. Your inner bliss, your inner silence, your inner joy which is formless, you have not seen it. Can you see the emptiness? Can you see the silence? But you can feel it. You can live with it. You can feel the breeze touching you, but you cannot give it a form. In order to give it a form, you need another instrument. So it is the body that gives it a form and the connection between the two is very important. This is a remembrance. This remembrance is the most essential part of the mind to remember that I am walking, I am talking, I am singing and eating leads to awareness. Remember that I am, never forget and who you are the consciousness. It is the consciousness that exists. It is the silence that exists. In the beginning you will find it arduous. There will be some very rare moments when you feel illuminated. But it does not last for long. Do not feel miserable. A single moment of awareness is enough to bring something into you, to bring a drop of nectar. If once a drop of nectar has fallen into your being, you have tasted it, you will never go for the ordinary one. Indeed, bitter is the pristine wine of this brewer. Allow a drop of this to ooze into your being. Allow a drop of this to ooze into your being. One moment you are connected to me. that will create a miracle. Certainly it will create a miracle. There will be some rare moments when you feel illuminated, but that does not last for long. Do not lament. Do not feel miserable. A single moment is enough. Remember, meeting is a moment's ecstasy. When you come in the company of the Master, the meeting happens in a moment. You look into the eyes of the Master. You drink through the eyes. And that very moment, something happens within you. And that is the moment of awareness. That moment alone is enough. When a clarion call comes in, it happens in a moment, but its effect lasts for a very long time. When you hear an echo, its echo is in a moment, but its effect lasts for a long time. Sometimes it is lifelong. Once you have called me lovingly, at long, the echo continues in my ears like the notes that are dissolving moment to moment and they continue to dissolve still. Ek baar jo tune pukara tha mujhe, once you have called me lovingly, once you have looked at me lovingly with those eyes, 
the depth in those eyes. The effect of that is continuing. It cannot be erased from my mind. The moment I remember that I am drowned in that inner bliss. Once the meeting happens in a moment and then there is nothing to worry about this. Just to try to catch hold of this tree, try to catch hold of that moment and slowly and slowly the gap will become less. Continuity will arise. And when your consciousness becomes a continuity, then you do not use the mind. Then instead of planning how to speak, what do you have to speak? When I come for the morning meditation session, just as you are surprised what this person is going to speak, I am also surprised what the existence wants to overflow through me. It is the existence, it is the consciousness that overflows through the instrument of the body, through the mind where the grammar, where the words are formed, and it is the vocal cord through which that silence which is the very essence of the being manifests itself into a form and slowly and slowly there comes a continuity and this continuity will arise and you realize it is the consciousness that is walking behind. It is the consciousness that has become a continuity Then you do not use the mind. Then instead of planning you act out of consciousness. You need no apology, nor any explanation. You are whatever you are. You can be in a state of constant remembrance or mindfulness. And this mindfulness is your authentic religion. This remembrance is your authentic religion. With remembrance you act out of consciousness, not planning. You are whatever you are. This mindfulness is your essential nature. And when you reach to this junction, then meditation leads you to a state of freedom that you have never known.